You guys receive your instruction in the just room. I expect a clean, fair fight start to finish. Your belt line here is good. Anything below there is low. Anything below there is low. Good luck. Javier Martinez told us, I learned a lot about myself sparring Jaime Munguia for this camp. That showed me that I belong with the bigger guys. And when the competition steps up, I'm good and ready for it. He'll have an opportunity to prove it tonight against Raul Solomon. Salomon trained by Edgar Estrellita Hasso. Duel between a southpaw and an orthodox fighter. Martinez, everyone was very high on him as an amateur team. Number one in the country at 165 pounds. He's had his ups and downs as a pro, though. But now he says, I'm disciplined, and I'm ready to start this next stage in my career. Yeah, and he's going to have a tough out tonight. Salomon, he can, he can punch, and he's already closed the distance already, and not many punches are thrown as of now from Martinez. Martinez told us in the fighter meetings that he's going to have to box Solomon. He says he's going to have to be careful. He's going to test his power early, see what he can do, and then he said he's going to start opening up his attack. However, he has to keep that momentum going. He had a spectacular performance last time out. He got you know? a vicious knockout over Isaiah Wise in the first round. Ended a five, a streak of five straight decision wins, but that was a dangerous situation he put himself with, and Salomon landed a nice right uppercut. See what Salomon's doing, he's just getting off to the races. He's not waiting, he's not trying to, what you call, uh, you know, test the water. No, he's just jumping right into the deep end. He's closing the gap, he's marching forward, and it's pretty easy for him to get through that front door. I mean, Martinez is right, as of right now, is not doing anything, not using his jab, just using that high guard. And Salomon is just walking straight in. Nice body work there. There he goes. He opens up. Martinez finally found the spot, the soft spot on Solomon, going down to that body, coming around those guards. Watch your head. Watch your head. Body work from Solomon. Good defense, though, using that elbow as Martinez got the long arms. Out of hand. I'm waiting on the body shot. I'm waiting on that body shot right to the solar flex from Martinez. That's what I'm waiting on. That's a punch that's open for him right now. Straight right to the body from Salomon. Break down Martinez, not letting him get off here early on. Now Martinez just playing defense right now. He's catching right now. He's catching. He's letting him wear down a bit. Let's see if he opens up, though. I mean, you know, this could be part of his strategy. Watch your head, guys. Not Both get hit guys. with a big shot early on. Start digging down to the body and slowly break down Salomon. Third eighth rounder for Javier Martinez. Oh, that was a low blow for Martinez. Solomon shakes it off. Straight right from Solomon. Yeah, you're gonna lose round. If you're not Stop throwing, let your hands go, and you're just taking shots. You're not dictating, you're not doing anything. You're not controlling much. And then you explode every now and then. Guess who might go, who's gonna win that round? The one that's been busy, busy, busy. And that's been Solomon this round. You know who's gonna have to keep that in mind tonight? Ooh. In our main event, Jermaine Ortiz will be challenging Teofimo Lopez for the WBO Junior welterweight title. This man gave Vasily Lomachenko all he could handle in a tight loss. And tonight is his first world title opportunity. And he gets to go against one of the most dynamic and explosive fighters in the world in Teofimo Lopez on the grand stage right here on Super Bowl weekend in Las Vegas, Nevada. And we'll be listening in to both of our corners. In Javier Martinez, we're going to have Robert Garcia. And in Raul Solomon's corner, it'll be Edgar Estrellita Hasso. We leave you with the ESPN Plus ringside coverage. All translate as needed. <laughs> Use your right hand. Push him back. Don't just stand there. Use rhythm. Keep pursuing him. Don't let him get in. Don't just follow him. Right there. You got to answer, though. Watch out for that counter. 
De los dos lados. Súbeme la izquierda y la derecha. Vamos, vamos. Left hand up. Sentado. Sit down on your punches. Vamos, pues. Sigue, sigue. Sigue, sigue. Go after him. Continue. No me le hagas confianza. Don't get overconfident. Vamos, vamos. Llévalo. Llévalo para atrás. Chícalo abajo. Llévalo, llévalo. Derecha por fuera. Abajo. Watch your head. Síguele, síguele. Hey, watch that low. El arriba. Eh, paso there y vuelta. You go. Paso y vuelta. Hop and step. Sigue, sigue, sigue. Cierrate bien. Vamos, vamos, más Close seguido. Vamos. Levántalo. Gotta throw more punches. And those uppercuts. Tócalo, tócalo. Touch him, touch him. No te esperes. Don't wait. Dale vuelta. Dale vuelta. Turn him. Combinaciones. Combinations. No nomás uno, güey. Not just sigue, one. Sigue, sigue, sigue con combinaciones. Gotta throw more combinations. Así, así. Así, así. Go side to side. Ahí, ahí, ahí. Right there. Right there. Solo golpe. Don't stand straight up. Llevalo para atrás, llevalo para atrás. Take him backwards. Ahí, ahí, ahí está. Combinaciones. Echalo atrás. Echalo atrás. Push him back. Pícalo abajo. Go downstairs. Sigue, sigue. Watch sigue trabajando. Right. Esto. Keep Sigue working. Set up that uppercut. Vamos, vamos. Más de uno, más de uno. You gotta throw more than one, Así, Solomon. Así, úsala, úsala. Now go, use that jab. Síguelo picando abajo. Esa, síguelo usando. Using that jab. Ahora, 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 ahora. Ahí estás, güey. You're there. Eso, otra He's too slow for you, Javi. Ese. There you Sigue go. Usando. Sigue usando. Sigue usando. Sigue usando. Close your guard. Salte la escuela. Eso. Ahora sí, lo veo. Lo veo. Cérralo. No lo hay. Una no lo sigas. Hay que cerrar la Doble jab. Two combinations. Double jab. Sigue usando. Sigue usando la mano derecha, güey. Sigue usando. Use your right hand. Salte de ahí, güey. Get out of there. Duro abajo. Go downstairs. Cuerpo y ope. To the body and the uppercut. Don't let him steal the round from you, Martinez. There you go. There you go. Just keep doing it. Way to go. Hey, that's exactly what you got to do, kid. You see what happens? Take a deep breath. Deep breath. ¿Cómo se siente, güey? ¿Cómo sientes la fuerza de él? Está fuerte, no está pesado, güey. Is he heavy? He's only strong because he's heavy. He doesn't hit hard. He's slow. He's too slow for you. Wait, you just wait there for him? I don't want to see that. You got to watch him. You got to keep active with the jab and then move and then snap it again. You have to go first. He's too slow. You go first, you land one shot, and then you step around him. No te le quedes ahí, güey. You have to turn him. Don't let him just wait for you. You got to catch him coming in with the jab and then turn him. Robert Garcia, as well as Robert Garcia Jr. And we're back to traditional coverage after hearing Espanol in the corners. Pues en realidad yo no sé ni lo que se va a tomar, pero como está pues de listo. Cerrándolo, cerrándolo. Úsala, úsala. Síguelo picando. No, todo. Round three of schedule eight rounder. You see Solomon still pressuring Tim, but it was a great second round for Javier Martinez as he let his hands go. That's all he needs to do. He needs to counter off those blocks, catch and shoot. That right to the body, though, from Solomon really slowed him down. Yeah, here. you need to give. He needs. If if Martinez wants to pull ahead in this fight, what he needs to do is he needs to apply more offense to that defense. You know, you don't get credit for defense. You get credit for the offense. And you see the busier fighter here, the one that's 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 taking it. Watch your head, guys. Watch your head. It's a nice short right from Solomon to Martinez. However, Solomon has been been pretty consistent. Stop. So far in this fight, in pressing and forcing the fight on Martinez. <coughs> nice body shot there from Solomon as Martinez continues to flurry over the top. But that's what Mar Martinez sees exactly what he needs to do, what he's doing right now. That's what he needs to do. He needs to get, get on his stick, get heavy on your jab, get heavy on your jab, follow up with combinations. 
anticipate what Solomon is doing. We saw how effective the jab was tonight for Charlie Sheen. Yeah. But you see, look, look, look. Oh, he just walked through the front door. There's nothing that, that Solomon is doing that's special to get on the inside because Martinez is not giving him anything to worry about. He's letting him walk in his house rent-free. Rent he in the kitchen. He upstairs. He everywhere. He taking showers. He's doing whatever he wants in his house right now. Yeah, and Robert Garcia had asked Martinez, you got to catch him coming in. You got to stop him as he's trying to attack. And Martinez not doing that. And Solomon having free range. And seeing Solomon is used to fighting at this pace. Yep. You know, you got to give him something to worry about, one. You got to break him down to the body. Or you got to hurt him with a big shot to bag him off. But this is the pace that he usually likes to fight at. Nice, comfortable pace. Let his hands go. See, you see the firepower coming back, and what do you see? Solomon putting his hands in his pocket. That's what Martinez needs to do. Get off and then move. Get off and then move. To be fair, both guys are only efficient when they're throwing punches. Because Martinez's defense is okay, but it's not seconds, like guys. he's dominating the fight based on his defense as... Round Good. three is coming to an end here. And our Mark Kriegel is with Keyshawn Davis, who opens up our ESPN show. Keyshawn, Keyshawn, Jose Pedraza is a tough fight. I commend you for taking it. What do you want people to see tonight? I just want people to know that I'm willing to fight anybody. I'm not here to turn down no fighters because I am a fighter. And tonight, people going to see what the businessman is really made of. He's crafty. He's experienced. He's been a champion, but you saw something in him. You, you saw a, a guy whose heart he can take, you can take. I mean, I've seen something myself, so it's not really – It don't. I don't care what opponent is in front of me. I know what I can do at the end of the day. Today I'm going to say I'm the best 135, and y'all going to see. Does this fight go the distance? We're going to see, but just know I'm going to I'm, I'm be the winner at the end of the night. Thank you very much, Keyshawn. Fellas, back to you. All right, Keyshawn Davis will be opening up against – Jose Pedraza when we move over to ESPN at 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific, wearing the Carl Weathers Apollo Creed. There is no tomorrow t-shirt in honor of the man who passed away this week. Just more of the same fight. Really, no strategy, no strategy changed by either guy. Martinez is doing the same exact thing, not able to establish distance, not able to establish a solid jab or even movement to be able to throw off the game of Solomon. Solomon is doing what he wants to do, and he's been doing it from the beginning. He's been pressing forward, pressing the action, letting his hands go at will. That's a nice left hand from Martinez. Can he follow it up? That was a low blow. Now, now the offense is coming from Martinez. Martinez is posting with that lead hand. I see if referee gonna step in and say something, anything about it. However, he hasn't done that yet. His body work from Solomon. But again, inconsistency from Martinez. Yep. Good body, body work, work there yep. from Martinez on the belt line. Clean shots. There's that jab from Martinez that Robert Garcia wanted him to see him catching Solomon with as he was coming in. Nice shot to the body from Solomon. That was a right to the rib cage. Both are trying to break down the opponent with body shots, Tim. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that plays in effect with both fighters. You know, Martinez has been landing some vicious shots around the guard of Solomon. And Solomon's been doing really well in the inside the pocket as well, landing his own body shots. You see some nice little short shots in the inside from him. But how can you have a reach advantage, have the height advantage, and not take the fight on the outside, and you know how to fight outside? And that's Martinez. He's actually fighting Solomon in his own game. Yeah, and here's Solomon pressing him up against the ropes. That was a nice shot that Martinez landed, and that Solomon landed, and Martinez needed a breather. Nice flurry Good there combination. from Martinez. 
See, when you see left. when it's all out distance, you see what he can do when he when he's extending with his punches. That's where he's most dangerous. Yeah, but then he stays there. He stays there for a receipt or a return fire. A nice short left from Solomon. And then here comes an answer from Martinez. You want to land one? I'm going to land seven. Good, good finish right here to the round right here. Great end to this round. Fight starting to break out now. All right. Part of what Martinez has been effective with, Tim, has been the body work in this fight. Yeah, absolutely. It's been the body work. He's been trying to, he's been trying to slow down the more stockier, stronger Solomon going down to the body. And that's the way you stop him from grabbing the keys inside your house and taking your car. You got to break him down to the body. When Martinez, when Martinez decides that was on the hip right there, that wasn't too low, that was actually on the belt line. When, our, when Martinez decides to throw and throw in combination form, from out from just a little distance, not so close, he's so successful. But he's not able to maintain that space and fight at the pace that Solomon can fight at. Halfway through this fight, we're starting the second half here in round number five of the scheduled eight rounder. Solomon comes with guns ablazing a right uppercut. But it's about consistency here, and neither has been consistent in terms of dominating. <laughs> Keep your mouth to yourself. <laughs> Solomon in there saying, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Martinez, Martinez, keep it up. Nice right uppercut from Solomon. Martinez landing some clean shots. Interesting strategy. Just, a, it's a real interesting strategy. He's making the fight harder for himself. Martinez is. Oh, there we go. Big there shot. Opening up. Letting it go. That's it. There's a right hook from Martinez. Says, it can be this easy, yet yeah. you want to make it tougher. See, I like that work. You saw how consistent that was. Now you're going to see a small little low because now he has to recharge Martinez. But when he's letting his hands go at the proper range, he doesn't give Solomon an opportunity. And I continue to say that. He doesn't give him an opportunity to land anything. See, Solomon is going complete defense now. Nice body work. So Solomon. you you being Martinez, why stand there? Disengage yeah. and go somewhere else. Make Solomon come to you like he's doing and there. And make him run into something. Bing, right hand to the body. There's Solomon landing a nice right to the body and then going to the head. But it's all started with a, with a strong, solid jab. A basic fundamental. Good shots. Martinez likes to be in a war, and that's what we have here in the fifth round. Body shot from Martinez. Good defense from Solomon to parry that uppercut that was coming with bad intentions from Martinez. Solomon's starting to slow down a bit. Get it off, it's starting to slow down a bit. Punches are not as sharp. Body work maybe having some sort of effect on him. That's why he's going to the body as well. Trying to slow Martinez down. Oh, that hurt. That hurt right there. That stab down to the body with the left hand is nasty from Martinez. That sets up an overhand left for Martinez. Could see an uppercut. Could see an uppercut land for Martinez soon. Ooh, that Real was a soon. short right hook. Solomon can take a shot, though. Solomon's leaning forward. Look at his yep. head. It's tucked down. His chin is tucked. Yeah, but that uppercut is debatable for him. That was a low blow. So Martinez is the one that's, that's talking. I thought it was Solomon. Is Martinez the one that's, that's saying, come on. Good finish from <laughs> Solomon here. As Ooh. Mark Kriegel is with the former champion, Jose Pedraza. Champ, he's younger. He's strong. You're the B-side. How do you win? Con mucha presión eh, y aprovechando eh, su descuido. Lots of pressure and taking advantage when he makes mistakes. What's the one thing that you cannot afford to do in this fight? Eh, no depender mucho de la defensa. No la pienso eh, 
no pienso creer mucho en la defensa o utilizar más la ofensiva, pero obviamente eh, sin perderle ese ritmo de la defensa. Not depend too much on defense, not rely on the defense, more on offense, but not lose control of the fight in the defense as well. No lulls. There you go, Timmy. He listened to you. <laughs> he gonna have to do more than that. It's just not one thing you can do against a young phenom like Keyshawn Davis. But he said in sparring, Luis Espada, his stepfather, also said, I never count his punches in sparring. He averages around 59 punches thrown per round. He said he was throwing 145, 130, 100 plus every single time. So at least he's coming in with a different mentality of being more offensive, which is what he needs. He's going to need defense, too, because things are going to be coming right back at him. Absolutely. Round six here between Martinez and the red and gold trunks taking on Raul Salomon with the black and gold trunks. Nice right uppercut. Salomon. Martinez catches him with the strafing left to the body and then upstairs. Both exchanging body punches, trying to set up something over the top. What he needs to do is set up the uppercut. Solomon starting to really get over that. There he goes. Nice uppercut right there. Set up the uppercut. Anytime you see someone's head just leaning forward over the center line. Now, the center line just means from the floor to the top, if you draw a line right between his body, up and down to the floor, if his head is leaning forward instead of being projected up on the center line, he's over his center line, which making him available for rubber cuts. Both over Look the at center that. line Ooh, at this point, that. but that was a nice uppercut for Martinez. Ooh. Coming around the guard. Well-placed body shot right there. Pick him up, pick him up. Good combinations for both guys. Stop. Stop. That's a veteran tactic right there. Leaning on him, trying to wear down his legs, trying to fatigue him even more. Martinez doing a good job right there. Veteran Stop. tactic. There's another veteran tactic Stop. right there. Martinez. Solomon really slowed down, didn't he? Yes, the body work. Not as active anymore. That body work definitely now in effect. It's funny because it's like, it doesn't feel like sometimes you get hit to the body, it doesn't hurt. However, later in the fight, you start breathing hard and you're saying, oh man, my Ooh. legs are heavy. Why are my legs heavy? And your power starts to go by the wayside and it just catches up with you. Ooh, another nice good. shot before from Solomon as Martinez got a little lazy trying to walk away and got clipped with a nice left to the body, but Martinez sitting on his punches here in the sixth round. Ooh, nice, nice straight shot. left. Just created enough space for himself, just a little bump to get a little distance for himself to land that left hand. Mm. Tonight's main event features Teofimo Lopez and Jermaine Ortiz. They have a common opponent, and it's Vasily Lomachenko. In October of 2020, it was a slow start for Loma, a great start from Lopez, and then Lomachenko turned it on. But it was that 12th round that won Teofimo Lopez that fight against Vasily Lomachenko, and that was one of the greatest victories for that young man. And then Jermaine Ortiz, two years later in October of 2022, it was the opposite. Loma got off to a great start. Then the middle rounds were competitive for Jermaine Ortiz. And in that 12th round, the first time going that distance, Jermaine fell short. And that's where Lomachenko put the pressure on and took the split decision victory over Jermaine Ortiz. And when you see that Lomachenko had all he could handle that night, a very debatable win, you just know that these two men, based on what they did against Vasily Lomachenko, it really came down to that 12th round. If you see just how many punches they threw, 83 versus 122 landed for Teofimo Lopez. He was more efficient, but I think it was a closer fight between Jermaine Ortiz and Vasily Lomachenko. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, we, we take in consideration 
you know, just the common opponent and what each fighter has done, you got to understand that styles make fights. Absolutely. You know, um, there's a lot of similarities between the two styles that we have tonight. Um, they tend to make similar mistakes, lunging, you know, dropping their hands as they're entering inside the, you know, mid-range. Um, however, the sharper puncher, the more precise puncher, the more calculated puncher, the, the more, the more I say, athletic fighter is Tiafimo Lopez. Stop. And he's been tested and he's been proven. Time and time again. Time and time again. Whereas Ortiz has yet to, to beat a A class or A plus or A minus fighter. Absolutely. And Teofimo did face a Vasily Lomachenko who had surgery on his shoulder immediately after the fight. So yeah. that was another thing that we have to take into And a account. year out of the ring as well. Correct. Nonetheless, Tim, you and I know that A plus B does not equal C in the sport of boxing. It's not that easy. There's levels to this game. Um, this is the big moment for Ortiz. This is a huge test for him. It's his, it's his shining moment. You know, it's a moment that a, a fighter waits on his entire life to have an opportunity to face, to, to fight for a world championship, but also to face one of the best fighters in the world. Yep. In his Ooh. weight class. The shot to the back of the head as Martinez is turning. And you see. So Ooh, that's Ortiz a low blow. That, that was I heard that all the way down here. But I can tell you this. You also, at this level, you quickly find out if you belong at this level, depending on how you perform in there. So if Ortiz, if he does enough to, 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 to go the distance and look somewhat decent, yeah, he's, 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 that, he's at that caliber. But if he gets starched tonight, it's a different story. Body work from Martinez. Solomon digging deep here in the seventh round. That guy's look tired. This is a world title opportunity. The first time that Jermaine Ortiz is. Oh, you get a warning here. Jermaine Ortiz is going to be fighting for his first world title in our main event. He's with our Mark Friegel. Jermaine, has anything surprised you about this week? Uh, not really, no. Why not? You, we make a big deal. Guy's never been here before. You act like you've been here the whole time. Mentally, physically, I feel like I've been here my whole life. I've been preparing for this. You will probably be the bigger fighter tonight. How can you use that to your advantage? Uh, just bully him when I get the chance to in the inside. You're still expecting a knockout? Yeah. What round? I don't know what round. There you go. We have a confident challenger, Jermaine Ortiz. I didn't hear no confidence. What'd you hear? Huh? I didn't hear no confidence. That, I, I did, you just a man monotone. We here to knock him out. We here to, you know what I mean? God, man, come on, Ortiz. He will be a little in bit more passion, main a little event, facing your voice. After those low blows at the end of that seventh round, Celestino Ruiz brings them both together and says, hey, keep it clean here in the eighth and final round. Martinez goes straight to the body. We remind you that our main event will start at 10.30 Eastern with Keyshawn Davis and Jose Pedraza in the lead up to our world title fight between Teofimo Lopez and Jermaine Ortiz. This has been an inside fight, Tim, which suits Solomon, but Martinez has been getting the best of him in the last few rounds. Because he finally decided to let his hands go. That's the reason why. Stop! Step back. In that corner, you hear Robert Watch Garcia here, saying, Javier, do this for your son. His son is in the building tonight. Leonel he does everything in the ring for his son. He says, I want him to be out of that environment that I grew up with, grew up in in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Ooh, that was a punch. After, although he said stop to me, he did, said the right thing, but Solomon did not stop. No, he didn't. Watch it, watch it. Turning into a battle of attrition. Nice combination there from Solomon. And then Stop. Martinez with a shot of his own as Solomon turns him around. <laughs> Stop. Don't punch. Step back. 
phone booth type of fight, right? Absolutely. Each guy having their moments, going back and forth. Martinez could have made it a boxing match, but he decided to make it a fight. And run him into shots. Now he's decided to, you know, showboat me on the outside and try to maintain distance outside. But I can say, you know, Martinez seems to be spirited tonight. He is spirited. He is very spirited tonight. He's talking. Usually you don't see him talking inside the ring. Maybe he's trying to motivate himself. However, when he lets don't his punch, hands go, punch. he's pretty, he, he's pretty, uh, I would say, accurate and busy with those shots. He's sparred Jaime Munguia, but nonetheless, he doesn't show the power of a fighter like Munguia tonight. He's only got three knockouts in 10 professional fights. Nine wins and a draw. Yeah, that thing, that always comes back and haunts you. You know, um, especially when you don't have the boxing ability stop. needed to be able to deal with a, a puncher in this division. You see that bling on the left side of the screen? That's Jared, the real big baby Anderson in the house. Is he in the house? Yeah. Uh. This fight is in the books. Javier Martinez, did he do enough to keep his unbeaten record on the line, 9-0-1? Or did Raul Solomon, who's 12-2, come in and upset the fighter out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You said it was a phone booth match, Tim, and that's exactly what we're gonna see here. Yeah, it was a slow, I mean, it was a slow start, honestly, for Martinez. He really didn't get started to midway in this fight. Hopefully, you know, he didn't lose a lot of those early rounds. You know, he had a good finish towards the middle. He started letting his hands go, really digging down to the body of Solomon and catching him as he was coming in in spots. Uh, occasional uppercuts up the middle but an interesting selection of a game plan to face Solomon. Um, there were moments where I saw that Martinez can actually stay on the outside and use his, his boxing ability, but he just chose to stay close and work and fight Solomon in his own game. Um, Solomon, to me, has been the consistent fighter all night. He had the same approach all the way through, really didn't change too many gears. However, I'm interested to see what the judges and how they have it. Absolutely, it's going to be an interesting dynamic. I think he should have done enough to take the victory, but I don't know. <laughs> really, you think it's that bro, close? I don't know. <laughs> I, mean, I can see four rounds of peace. I can see, you know, uh, Solomon possibly. He's been the busier fighter, pressing forward the whole night. Again, wasn't a whole lot of activity coming from Martinez, and then when he decided to throw, he was successful. I have it 5 3 Martinez, but I'm not a judge. But there are three judges that do matter, and Mark Chinook has their scorecards. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds here inside the Michelob Ultra Arena, we go to the judges' scorecards for the official decision. Max DeLuca has it 79-73. Tim Cheatham and Glenn Feldman both have it 78-74. All in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. Javier Milwaukee made Martinez. Javier Martinez does indeed earn his 10th victory as a pro. And Raul Solomon really put him to the test tonight here inside the Michelob Ultra Arena.